Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is J-Man Time and today I have a video on the ongoing collapse or slow motion collapse of the state of Afghanistan. Now, since at least 2018 through 2020, Afghanistan has begun to slowly collapse into the hands of various Islamist groups operating in the country, whether it be the Taliban or the Islamic State or some of the other Islamist groups like the Haqqani Network and several other Islamist groups that we never really hear about in the media like the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan movement, which is another Taliban-like organization that operates in the country. But the Afghan army is slowly disintegrating and these militant groups, whether it be the Taliban or whatnot, are actually taking over large swaths of the country. In just the last 30 days, the Taliban and other groups have captured between 80 and 100 districts out of 325 districts in Afghanistan. This has gotten to the point now where the Taliban and other jihadi forces and insurgent groups have captured roughly half of the country. The situation is so bad that several provinces are on the verge of total collapse and the provincial capitals of those provinces are completely surrounded. The capital cities of Marj al Sharif and Balt province, Lashdega and Helmut province, Tarin Kut and Yurzgan province, Mayanmana and Faryai province, Teloquan and Takar province, Median Shar and Warduk province, Parun and Duristan province, Kualat and Zabul province, and Kunduz and Kunduz province are all surrounded. These are the provincial capitals of these provinces and they are all completely surrounded by the Taliban. There is just the capital city itself and a few towns and military checkpoints either around these areas or near the borders of these areas. And almost the entire province, like 80 to 95% of those provinces have been completely captured by the Taliban. And only the provincial capital is left standing along with a few military bases. The situation has gotten so bad that even the Islamic State or ISIS in Afghanistan have launched their own offensive in the Kunar province and have captured at least two to three villages in just the last 48 hours from the Afghan government. There is not a single province in Afghanistan where either the Taliban or some other group has no power. There's no safe haven in Afghanistan. Everywhere, every province in the country has at least a few towns or villages that have been taken over by jihadist or insurgent groups or are being contested between the Afghan army and these militant groups. The situation has gotten so bad that the Taliban forces are less than 50 miles away from Kabul city. There's like Taliban groups that are positioned at least 50 to 60 miles away from Kabul city. The adjacent province to Kabul, the province of Wardak, has been almost completely captured by the Taliban. And the capital city of Wardak province, Median Shar, is almost completely surrounded. There's just the city itself and a few villages scattered throughout the province that have been taken. It's gotten so bad that some of the pro-government warlords have taken up their own arms uh, without the military's assistance and has begun trying to recapture territory from the Taliban themselves. I could go on all day about uh, which areas are falling to the Taliban. It's why these provinces are collapsing so quickly. Now, what many people in the Western world don't know is that Afghanistan it's not just a war, it is a civil war. And this civil war has been going on since the 1970s, since the era of the Soviet-Afghan war, and since the era of the 1990s when the Soviet Union pulled out and the, the Soviet-Afghan government collapsed in 1992. Many of these different uh, clans, tribes, and ethnic groups have been clashing over territory since the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. So it's not just a war between the democratic state of Afghanistan and the Taliban, it's a war between warlords and tribal leaders. The situation has gotten so bad in the country that some of the Afghan army units are actually defecting to the Taliban and other insurgent groups. What people don't know in the US is that 
many of these tribal militias and some of these Afghan army units are loyal to their tribal leaders. So if their tribal leaders decide to switch sides and join the Taliban, then usually that entire army division in that area usually ends up in the hands of the Taliban. It includes all of their weapons and equipment, most of which was given to them by the US and NATO forces. So you're talking millions of dollars of equipment are ending up in the hands of the Taliban. These are rifles, machine guns, artillery systems, and even armored personnel carriers. And even more importantly, aircraft. Several dozen Afghan army air bases are either surrounded by the Taliban or are coming under attack from the Taliban and other insurgent groups. Even the aerial equipment, the planes and helicopters and cargo ships might end up in the hands of these militant groups. And the reason for all of this is simple. The war in Afghanistan is not just a war between the Afghan government and the Taliban, it's a war between the Afghan government and a whole slew of militant Islamist and jihadi guerrilla organizations that are operating not just in Afghanistan, but in the neighboring countries. Countries like Pakistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. These militant groups are also based in these countries. There are Taliban groups in Pakistan, the Pakistani Taliban. There are Taliban-like organizations operating in Uzbekistan, like the Islamic Jihad Union. That's an Islamist militant group that fights alongside the Taliban that is based in both Uzbekistan and in Wazoristan, Pakistan. You got the Turkestani Islamic Party. Those are Chinese Uyghur jihadis that are coming from China. That there's a war happening in China, or at least a political struggle happening in China between the Chinese government and the people of East Turkestan, or the Chinese Uyghurs. And there are some Uyghur jihadis that are going to Afghanistan to fight with the Taliban, on the side of the Taliban. You got other Islamist groups, like the Lashkar el Islam. This is another jihadi group that operates both in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. And then you got Al Qaeda forces. And then you got ISIS, the Islamic State, or the, the Islamic State in Afghanistan. These are the ISIL forces that are operating inside of Afghanistan. They got several thousand fighters. Several thousand ISIS fighters are operating inside of Afghanistan. All of these groups are pretty much attacking the Afghan government and pro-government forces. That includes the Afghan army and some of these tribal militias and other militias, non-tribal militias that are operating in the country trying to maintain order. And the situation has gotten so bad that some of the Afghan army units are just joining these groups. They're just not fighting. They're just giving up. I've seen video after video after video of Afghan army units surrendering to the Taliban and these other groups taking all their weapons and equipment and vehicles with them. These are million dollar weapons and vehicles that were given to them by the US armed forces over the last 20 years or the NATO coalition over the last 20 years and they're all ending up in the hands of the Taliban forces and other jihadis. So Afghanistan is being hit by a tsunami of just foreign groups and some domestic groups like, like the Taliban. The war in Afghanistan is almost an unwinnable war. How do you stop an endless horde of jihadis that are both in your country and are also coming from the neighboring countries? The neighboring countries don't even know how to deal with these groups. They just let them roam free in the country. In Pakistan, they do fight the Taliban sometimes and other insurgent groups, but ultimately these groups still have a safe haven in, in Pakistan. Same thing with Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Tajikistan. They all tried to fight these Islamist groups operating in their countries too, but they can't really do much to stop them from spilling over or traveling to Afghanistan. And then you have the Haqqani Network. This is one of the organizations or underground organization that recruits jihadis to go fight for the Taliban, you know, and other groups in the country. And then you also have Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda in Afghanistan itself is pretty small only like a few hundred fighters, but Al-Qaeda is operating in the neighboring country. There's Al-Qaeda in Pakistan, there's Al-Qaeda in Uzbekistan, in Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan. And they're recruiting locals from those countries to go fight in Afghanistan. So if you're in the Afghan army, you're basically being swarmed 
by an endless tsunami of just foreign jihadis coming in from all over. And even after 20 years of the U.S. and NATO trying to rearm or build up the Afghan government and the Afghan military, it's just not enough. The Afghan army has about 350,000 soldiers. It has less soldiers than Syria and Iraq. And we know how badly Syria and Iraq struggled with ISIS and other jihadi groups. They were barely hanging on until Russia and the U.S. came along. And it's the same thing in Afghanistan. You know, the Afghan army is just being overrun by an endless horde. It's the equivalent of fighting on the Eastern Front in World War II. If you were in the German army in World War II, you were being sworn by an endless horde of Soviet soldiers. And if you were in Poland in 1939, you were being overrun by an endless horde of German soldiers and other Axis powers. It's the same thing, but replace the Soviets and the Germans with Islamist insurgents, militants, and jihadi organizations. It's just a, an endless horde of, of carnage coming your way. It's almost impossible for the Afghan government to actually win, even with the U.S. and NATO in the country. Even when we had the troop surge back in the 2000s and 2010s, it still wasn't enough. They just kept coming and coming and coming. And now it's gotten to the point now where the U.S. and NATO countries are pulling out because it, it's just unwinnable. And now the U.S. and NATO see exactly what the Soviets had to deal with during the Soviet-Afghan War and what the British had to deal with during the British wars in Afghanistan in the 1700s, the 1800s, and the 20th century. An endless horde of Mujahideen, as the Taliban and these insurgent groups called them, these foreign jihadis and these local jihadis, all coming together to launch a massive pincer attack you know, the, what's happening in Afghanistan is like a giant Islamist or Islamic pincer attack or encirclement of the country. Every province, every provincial capital has been encircled to a point. If they haven't been encircled, there are sleeper cells in those provinces taking over towns and villages and pretty much laying the groundwork for the Taliban and these other groups to come in and take over. So after 20 years of non-stop fighting, it's just a bloodbath. And it's gotten to the point now where the Afghan army is just on the verge of collapse in many of these provinces. Now you gotta ask yourself, how are these groups getting all this money? How are these, these Taliban groups, these other jihadi groups, getting their weapons and money? Well, these groups have bank accounts. They own businesses in the neighboring countries and outside of the neighboring countries. The Taliban has businesses in places like Pakistan and Uzbekistan and Tajikistan and Turkmenistan. They own secret businesses and they own open businesses. They also have businesses in places like Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Bin Laden, Osama Bin Laden, owns companies in Saudi Arabia. He owned those companies when he was alive in the 90s and 2000s. These other jihadi groups, members of Al-Qaeda, and members of these other groups that I mentioned, like the Islamic Jihad Union from Uzbekistan, they all have businesses in the neighboring countries. And they make money, and they use that money to buy weapons and recruit jihadis or mujahideen. Whether it's Afghan businesses or businesses operating in Afghanistan from other countries, they gotta pay 50% taxes to the Taliban. They put a 6% tax on any imports coming in, in, into the territories that they control. So it's almost impossible to defeat them. They just have an endless source of money. The Taliban are like the Viet Cong, but with better funding in a way, money-wise anyway. During the Vietnam War, the same thing happened to South Vietnam. The South Vietnamese were fighting an endless horde of communist troops from both their own country and from the neighboring countries of Laos and Cambodia. It got to the point where South Vietnam was just overrun. And that's exactly what's happening now in Afghanistan. The Afghan army is just being overrun by an endless horde of jihadis. And it's just sad watching it. It's gotten to the point now where literally hundreds of thousands of Afghans are trying to leave the country. And some are saying that when this war is over with, there'll be a massive refugee crisis from Afghanistan. At the end of it all, it's gonna be like at least seven to 10 million people leaving the country by the end of the conflict, if it ever ends, that is. If the Taliban and these other groups are able to take over the country, 
there's just going to be another wave of refugees, just like you saw after the Iraq War and the Syrian War and the war in Libya, which had millions of people fleeing those countries. So the situation in Afghanistan is just horrendous. And the Afghan army and government are just collapsing. And I wouldn't even say slow motion. They're just collapsing rapidly. The Taliban captured 80 to 100 districts in just the last two months. And Afghanistan only has 325 districts. How long would the Afghan government even last at this point? I don't even know. So what do you all think of this situation? Please tell me in the comment section below. And what would be your solution? The only thing I could think of is if another country comes to help the Afghans. Unfortunately, there's no country that wants to do that. None of the surrounding countries care enough about Afghanistan. So they don't even really care if the Taliban takes over. Russia and China care to an extent. They do sell the Afghans weapons, just like the US does, but they're not going to intervene militarily. They're not going to send any troops. But Russia already came there and left. So what do you all think? Please tell me in the comments section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.